Today, we're doing it again with three more bottles that come straight from the pits of hell, in my opinion. Here we go on the worst bottles in my bar. We did this pretty recently with the worst bottles in my bar. A lot of people wanted to know why I didn't have Malort. And the truth is, is that I was out of Malort. Malort is a pain to get. It's only in like one market. And eh, whatever. I got more Malort. I got two bottles. And uh, the way you normally use Malort, which is not at all, I think those two bottles will last forever. <laughs> so we've got Malort in this episode, which isn't great stuff, but honestly, it's not as bad as you guys make it out to be. But it ranks. It ranks for one of the worst bottles in my bar for sure. We've got probably going to be pretty divisive, Southern Comfort, which is garbage. And we've got, I don't know how to pronounce that. It's, uh, I'm going to say it's Klapustermied or Klapustermied. I think it's like that. So this is from Dansk Mead, Mead. I really liked their one bottle, uh, the Viking Blood. It's tasty. And I was like, let's buy everything I can see from this company. So I bought like several bottles of this on a lark and it's poison. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. So the goal today is to find if there's anything useful I can do with these bottles. Make a cocktail that features Malort, a cocktail that features Southern Comfort, and a cocktail that features Kipistunid. Let's get started. All right, here we go. A lovely tasting of Malort. Um, just a little something in the glass there. I'll give you what the nose is. Apples, but bitter. Really, it's just bitter. It smells chemically. I mean, I'm being very generous when I describe it as smelling like an apple. It really, it smells like, um, Nail polish remover, like acetone, strongly. And just chemical. It just doesn't smell very nice at all. It's only 70 proof, it's 35% alcohol, so it's not super high proof. I mean, it's just about standard spirit proof, but. Oh, cool, yeah, and this is Besk. Um, and Besk is, oh, a higher proof version of the same style of liqueur. So, yeah, baby, Besk is a little bit better. Here's Malort. Look, I don't like it, but it tastes a lot like Sue's to be honest. Like it tastes a lot like a lot of other bitters. It's not the worst, th it's it's far from the worst thing I've ever had. I, It has like a finish that I don't like. It gets salty, but otherwise it's just bitter. It just tastes like a really bitter root. And if you're not accustomed to, to putting your, your mouth into those kinds of tastes, right? Like if you're not accustomed to experiencing that flavor profile, sure, it's gonna be the worst thing you've ever had. But I, I got a little annoyed with somebody saying it was the worst bottle on the planet, not just in your bar. And I told them they had a baby mouth because the truth of the matter is that this is, this is the top of the barrel of bad stuff. This is the beginning of where bad begins. This is not really that bad. I mean, this is, if I was in some place and this was like a delicacy and everybody wanted to drink this around the dinner table, I would be like, great, fine, sure. It's really not even that hard. And I don't want anybody to think that like I've got fake Malort here or something like that. I don't know. I'm sure that like so many people are so convinced that this is like the devil's taint sweat that they're just gonna be like, that's not real Malort then. Like it, it is, I mean, it's the real thing. It's just, you don't know. You've got to have, I'm telling you, you need to get that bottle of Kaoling liquor that I was using last time. It's, that is a truly unholy spirit. It's unbelievable. I, I don't know what to say. Like, this is just the beginning. It really is. This is Besk. Oh, that was a big pour. I didn't mean for that. And Malort, for all intents and purposes, is a type of what this is, Besk or whatever. These are wormwood liqueurs. That's what they are. They're high proof. Well, they're not super high proof. They're normal proof, wormwood, spirits, liqueurs, whatever you want to call them. Um, I don't know if they're technically meet the definition of a liqueur, so they're probably a spirit. And I want to be clear too, absinthe isn't a wormwood liqueur. Absinthe is an anise, an anise liqueur. It has wormwood as a component of its pastiche of herbs, but it's not primarily wormwood. There are these like, stupid like make your own absinthe kits online where you take like neutral grain spirits, grain alcohol, and they give you like a tea bag full of wormwood roots to soak in it. I would imagine that the resulting stuff is pretty close to this. So they're basically bitters. That's really what these are. They're just big bottles of bitters. And that's kind of why they're tough to use because you, you, to use them, you want to use them in like little drips and dashes. You don't really want to use like a huge big pour of it. Um, but I think that actually to a certain extent, if you treat this like you would a big pour of Angostura, even though it's nothing like Angostura. Angostura has so much character and flavor and it's delicious in a way that this just isn't. Um, that might be the way to make this drink. It's kind of what we did with the Kaling. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to point out, this is Besk because I used Besk recently in an episode as a stand-in for Malort because I happen to have this bottle. I want to have never actually done them side by side. I think that they should be, the one, I'm gonna say this has a much more, this does actually, I think, have just a touch of anise in there. Just a little bit, just off the nose. It's a little closer to absinthe, but I mean, honestly, 
It's much more interesting, actually. It's much more black pepper. It's a lot sweeter. This is a lot better, to be perfectly honest. It is a better thing. So maybe I shouldn't have done that, but I had to. Oh my God, my nose is so itchy. I got such an itchy nose with these freaking nostril hairs. I hate it. Hey, like most people, I need sleep to live. So I've got to thank Helix Sleep for sponsoring this episode and giving me a supple surface to do my biologically necessary sleeping on. I think back to over a year ago when Helix Sleep first asked me to try one of their mattresses on my show. Did I know I'd still like it 12 months later? That I'd wind up sleeping on it on a whole lot? No, I did not. Yet here I am a whole year of sleeping later. Sleeping is good and Helix makes sleeping. If you're not familiar, Helix makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your sleep style and they ship them straight to your front door. Helix, of course, knows that beyond the simple imperative for sleep that everyone is different. That's why they made the sleep quiz to match your unique body type and sleep preferences to exactly the right mattress for you. Personally, I am something of a hybrid side and back sleeper, so they paired me up with a Midnight Lux, and I have found that little guy to be the most sleepy indeed. Buying online couldn't be easier, but Helix knows you want to test this kind of thing out, which is why you get a 100 night sleep trial to see if it's the right mattress for you. If it's not, they'll come and take it away. No questions asked, never to be slept on again. Sleep support delivered to sleep location. How can you top it? And the mattress I had before being introduced to my Midnight Lux is now nothing but a fading, distant memory. But I do feel pretty confident in saying that I'm sleeping better now than I was then. And I can't stress enough that improving your sleep is a net positive in the grand scheme of things, considering that without sleep, you will die. I like how supportive the mattress is too. Back support isn't quite as important as sleep in your biological mandates, but I'd still put it pretty high on the list and this mattress does it. So click the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash how to drink for up to $200 off your Helix Sleep mattress plus two pillows. Pillows are really helpful for neck having people, which statistically you are very likely to be. So that should be relevant to your interests. Thanks for hanging out with me while I talk to you about the importance of sleeping. Now back to your regularly scheduled HTD. All right, here's what I'm thinking I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try, I'm just gonna try something. I'm just gonna try this idea. Half an ounce of simple. One ounce of this Corte Vetusto Mesquite Smoked Mezcal. By the way, if you're interested in any of these spirits, please check out Cariata using the link in the pinned comment below. You wanna pick up a bottle of this to try out this drink for yourself. Now one ounce of Malort. I'm a little out of order here. I wanna get some lemon in there. Probably one ounce of lemon juice. Get some strawberries. In this case, I'm just gonna use one because I got this huge one here. I'm just gonna take this one big strawberry. Great, and now ice in here. All right, and I'm gonna mostly open pour this, but I just wanna get hold that one giant piece of ice glass back. Let's garnish that with a lemon wheel, I think. Here we go. I don't know what to call it yet, but let's find out if it's a drink yet. It honestly smells nice. Lemons and strawberries are good. That's a nice combo. Hold on, I did a, it's a bold choice here, Greg. I don't know if this is actually gonna work or not, hold on. I'm gonna add another Sanfa Simple. I don't know, I, <laughs> this one might not work. Well, sometimes I just need a place to start. You need that first cocktail. <laughs> the mezcal may have been a mistake, but I was really trying for something here. All right, here we are, a little sweeter now. Half more, another half ounce of Simple. That actually helped a lot. Is this for everybody? No, but I don't hate it. The only thing I think it needs is, uh, all right, so I have two ideas here. We got a little chipotle powder, and some tahine. So tahine is a, um, a seasoning. It's got a lot of lime in it and other things in it. I don't think it's the right move here. I think that chipotle is the right move. How to get the chipotle into the drink? Do we just put it in as if we were going to shake with it? Yeah, I think probably that's right. I think I'm just gonna put a little, I'm just gonna, you know what? That's what you do. You just put a little chipotle right across the top of it. And I don't normally like spicy stuff, but I do love chipotle. That's some nice stuff. That's smoky chipotle flavor. All right, here we go. This is a Chipotle strawberry. We're gonna need a name for this. This is a weird drink. So I'm personally not really big on mezcal, but I recognize that people like it, right? So this is what I'm gonna say about it, right? Cause I can, I can taste it. Whether or not I subjectively enjoy it is a personal matter, but here's the flavor profile, okay? Strawberries up front and with smoke, which is unusual, but not unwelcome. That gives way to a brief pause where it's just strawberry sweetness, and then you get a little bit of rising heat from the chipotle, which is smoky in a different way than the mezcal was smoky, and it's nice. And it leaves your mouth kind of burning. And then finally, at the very, very, very end, that slowly subsides into um, base bitterness, which is the, the, the malort, and then again, strawberries on top of that. And, and of course, my lips are burning a little bit from the chipotle. So 
Am I just kind of throwing a lot of stuff here at Malort to hide it? You could maybe, but I, I want to say that like I can taste the Malort here. I haven't hidden it. I have worked with it, I think. That's my, that's what I'm gonna say. Because the Malort flavor is still there. You get that bitterness, especially at that one point. Throughout it, yes, but definitely there's a point in the profile of the flavor where it comes to the fore. I'm not just hiding it in this case. It's just Malort is an extremely loud flavor. It is big. And to work with that, you need to bring other huge flavors to the fore. That's why I, I reached for Mezcal. For the reason that I'm not really big on smoky stuff, I don't really do a lot with Mezcal on the show, but I had this instinct that like, well, whether I like Mezcal or not, I think that if we think in terms of Mezcal, it will it will cut and work with the loudness of the Malort. Is smoky Mezcal a flavor that you typically wanna add bitterness to? Actually, I think the answer is no, and that's where the rest of the drink comes in. So what I'm thinking is like, well, sometimes I think that that fresh fruit, strawberry flavor, Taking that and making that smoky and putting that with mezcal, that can be a really interesting thing. And then that is a bridge into the bitterness. Um, and we added a little bit more sweetness to it because the half ounce simple versus a whole ounce simple, big difference. And it's the kind of drink that honestly, I'm okay with this sort of like open pour porch sipper being on the sweeter end of the spectrum. And then I, why the pepper, why the chipotle? A lot of these flavor profiles, the kind of smoke I was getting from this mezcal is very acrid and kind of nasally and like very aggressive, like sharp and and smoky and bitter and kind of matching the bitterness of the Malort that way. But I wasn't getting that like mellow smoke vibe that like I get with a smoked Chipotle. Basically what I'm getting at is that the drink felt like it was missing base notes. I don't know if that relates to anybody else, but in my brain, that's how it works. I had no base. And I thought that we could get there with the Chipotle. I like the Chipotle here. I don't know if it's really providing that bottom end that I was looking for, to be perfectly honest. But whatever it's doing, I'm no longer, I no longer feel like it's lacking, like it's missing its booty. So I think I did it. I think I did it. I don't know. I mean, Malort is tough to work with. You know, it's not really... <laughs> Like the best thing to do with Malort is to put a dasher on the top of this bottle. I really do think that the the problem with that is that there are so many more interesting bitters than this that like, why would you ever, why would this ever be the bitter you're gonna reach for? It really won't be. Ugh, it's just, it's just so one note. I'm not over the moon. I'm not gonna lie. This isn't something I, it's, you know, when I discover a cocktail that I subjectively love, it's very thrilling and awesome. I made a drink that somebody I think likes. Um, I'm curious if you like it. I would like more people to make it. Obviously there's some crazy ingredients in here. So it's like very few people are going to go out of their way to make this one, to be honest. But if you do make it, I would love to know what you think about it. Uh, what is the name for this drink? This is a, this is Marty Bird. This is the guy who does uh, the laundry for that cartel in the show Ozark. It's a Marty Bird. We made a Marty Bird and uh, we're moving on now to the next one. Let's do Southern Comfort. That should be pretty easy. What's funny is looking at this, like that looks like something you'd put Southern Com in Southern Comfort. That looks like a Southern Comfort drink. Now I'm going to try to do the other thing with Southern Comfort. We're going to go the opposite direction. Do the unexpected up next with Southern Comfort. All right. So I got a little Southern Comfort here. Just like retaste this. Oh yeah. Peach vomit. That's what it smells and tastes like. Hi, yay, yay. Oh my God. I hate that so much. Ah, oh, it's staggering how much I dislike that. How visceral my re my immediate reaction is to that. <laughs> the Lord does not inspire me. I truly hate this stuff. I'm sorry. This is garbage. All right, Southern Comfort. What are we making? Let me think. I'm trying to do something truly impossible here. I'm going to make a stirred drink that uses Southern Comfort. Um, why do I want to do it this way? I don't know. That's just kind of where my head's at right now. I'll tell you why, because I want this show, I want to keep doing worse bottles in my bar for a while. And I feel like if I, if I don't force myself outside of the mold of standard assumptions, that these are going to start to feel very repetitious. I think it's time to try it. Let's try it. I'm going to do one and a half ounces of Southern Comfort. This might be a crazy idea. Half an ounce of Drambuie. That's where we're getting our sweetness from. And now I think it's going to be one or two bar spoons of chartreuse and one dash of Angostura bitters. How did I come up with this recipe? I don't know. Is it a recipe yet? We don't know. We're going to find out. I am challenging myself on purpose here. You know, it's kind of easy. It's not easy, but like if you treat everything like a sour or tiki drink. Sure. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. I want to try and do something really hard here and make a, uh, 
a stirred classic cocktail, so to speak. And now a twist of lemon. All right, here we go. Uh, this is a drink I don't have a name for yet. So let's see how it is with a little lemon twist on top. I want one more bar spoon of chartreuse. We're right on the cusp of greatness here. A little sweet, not gonna lie. Now you can't really taste the Southern Comfort at all. It's good, it's drinkable, but it, it does fail. So what I'm getting off of this formulation is it's sweet black pepper and that hint of lemon. I don't think the Drambuie is coming through very loudly and I don't think the Southern Comfort's coming through very loudly. So I don't think this recipe works. I think that it's really been taken over by, by the chartreuse. So I'm going to dump it and try again. Felt right, felt like we were right close there, but I guess we weren't. All right, we're back and I want to take another crack at this Southern Comfort drink. I know you guys probably think I'm overthinking this because SoCo and lime, that's a thing, right? Um, well, one, it's a thing I've never found enjoyable in the slightest. And two, I don't think it's very good. And my goal is to try to make a drink, like a good drink that calls for Southern Comfort here. I'm sure you can use this in a lot of drinks. I don't know. I, I can't quite explain why this one is really under my skin. So I'm gonna pour an ounce and a half of it into my mixing glass. I went on a little bottle hunt around the old how to drink bar and I found some ideas. I have an idea. Benedictine. Do I want a whole quarter ounce? Yeah, a quarter ounce of Benedictine will be fine. And I think now a half an ounce of Lemon Heart 151. And uh, all out of order here. These are just my thoughts. This is just where I was at. I'm gonna do a little more than a quarter ounce of my own grenadine. Maybe this is a drink that will work. It's very challenging to make a stirred drink here with no citrus. Of course, if it has citrus in it, it would be a shaken drink. Maybe this wants to be a shaken drink. Maybe I need lime in this and I need to shake it. I am going to try to make this a stirred drink. I think those elements are going to balance and work, but I could be wrong. Give that a stir. Strain that into a coupe. And uh, let's see what this is like without any garnish first. Definitely not missing the Southern Comfort. That's in there. I like this drink. I think it needs a little touch of citrus. I think an orange twist is gonna be nice here. Maybe a lemon twist, but I think an orange twist is the way to go. Okay, here we go. A drink. I don't know what to call it yet. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's like a tobacco note in there. Like a dried, like humidor kind of smell. I like that a lot. I think that that really well balanced. Oh man, I'm, yeah boy. Sorry. <laughs> I'm very happy with myself because I was like shot in the dark there a little bit. So that takes the Southern Comfort flavor, which I, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of, and it balances it, okay? The, the Demerara, this guy right here, uh, that's what's doing the tobacco thing. This has got a little bit of funk in it, but a lot of this burnt sugar flavor. And we take that and we compare that, combine that with the Southern Comfort, and we lengthen them out together. We get this really mellow, molassesy flavor. The peach that's in Southern Comfort is now more present than when you drink Southern Comfort straight. This tastes more like peaches than a bottle of Southern Comfort does. I think that the Benedictine, the astringentness of it, the bitterness of it, the, but not bitterness, the herbaceousness of it has kind of scrubbed away the sour milk notes that I was getting in the the Southern Comfort. I think that's its main job here and I think it does it very admirably. It definitely does not need more sweetness. However, the grenadine is bringing a little bit of a fruit note, a fresher fruit note than what you get from the peach, but also it's letting us keep this a stirred drink without having to use fresh fruit because if it was a fresh fruit, it would be a shaken drink, it'd be a different kind of thing. It also adds a little color to it. There's not a lot of grenadine in there. I don't think it's really tremendously increasing the sweetness. Whatever it's doing, I think it's working. And then the orange twist, it brightens the whole thing. I think if it was a lemon, the lemon would dominate the drink. And that's why I wanted to try the orange. The orange brightens it. It brings in a little bit of that fresh citrus thing. I'm happy with this drink. It is a little on the sweet end of the spectrum, but this is definitely something that people would in order and enjoy. Oh man, that's kind of actually really neat. That's a very satisfying evolution turn. There is something in this flavor synthesis that's going on where the peachy Southern Comfort, which I'm telling you is expressing better here that it does neat is kind of doing this dance with the Lemon Heart 151 and the orange twist. And it kind of like really activates on the underside of my tongue in a very fun way. I don't know the term for this in music theory at all, but like there are certain like progressions of notes that feel to me like a question being asked. 
and they tease you like there's a resolution note coming to resolve that question, like it's being answered, and it never does. And I love when music does that because it keeps you in that moment of tension forever. And that's kind of what I feel like this drink is doing. It just feels like tension all the time. And what is this hand signal? This is uh, the ha tension hand signal, uh, as we all know. I like this drink a lot. I'm very happy with this. All right, up next, we're gonna look at Klepaster Mode. That's how you pronounce that, Klepaster Mode. <laughs> this is Nordic Caraway Honey Wine with natural flavor added. Ooh the smell when you pour this this stuff <laughs> oh, oh man they were really on to something over at the uh dansk mud uh factory when they came up with klepostumid oh boy ay 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 hachi machi it's cloudy it is pale i hate this I and mean, this is bad this smells ex i mean the nose on this is so close to that sorghum stuff, that kaoling, uh, the kinmen kaoling, that I, I, I don't, I, uh, it's so close to that that I'm like having flashbacks. I'm getting like cold sweats and shivers running up and down my spine. <sighs> Jesus Christ. I don't want to drink this anymore. Okay, here we go, this stuff. Oh fuck, I can't say that. Oh my God. Just shit straight in my mouth. Oh my God. So bad. Oh, fuck. It tastes like fungusy, rotting, molding wood or leather. Like an old pair of rental bowling shoes that you've been brining in like pickle brines and honey for a long time. Now this, I want to make a sour from, I think. So I'm going to start with one ounce of lemon juice. All right, one ounce of lemon juice coming up. What I'm doing here is I'm going to do some kind of thing. I'm gonna make this my sweetener and a split base. That's what I'm thinking. And that's why I think I probably don't need anything else. So I'm gonna go an ounce and a half of this stuff and an ounce and a half of the nose mill. Okay, ice time, ice, ice baby. Very simple drink. Let's see if it's any good. It's, now it's got a strong clipus de mood uh, nose. So I would say that we have not hidden our wild card ingredient, which is good. Want to make sure we honor it. A little dry. I thought the mead would be sufficient for sweetness. Let's add a half an ounce of simple. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, that does service to both. It seems like it's going to be a really standard bourbon sour. And then it takes this like, it's got a tangy flavor that goes along with the lemon very, very well. And it's not overly sweet. It's not underly sweet. It is the right amount of sweetness. But all of that, the volume is turned way down on that in the evolution. And then you are left with this lingering, I guess it's a caraway seed note, like a pumpernickel bread seed kind of taste that is not for me, it's not for me overbearing but I guess for maybe some people it might be. For me, I find it nice, it's subtle, and it leaves me with this very pleasant variation on a on a kind of sour. I really like it, actually. I'm I'm pretty happy with this. And maybe that's what it is too. It smells like it's about to taste like Cao Liang wine, and then you sip it and you're like, oh, thank Jesus, it doesn't taste anything like that. And like, it's, the whole time you're so relieved that you're just like, oh, this is great, this is just great. It is not actually a good drink at all. I don't know. Um, I think it's pretty good. You get a little bit of this up front first, actually. I wanna revise my profile here. You get a quick, yep, like that long blast of its brand of weirdness up front. And maybe it is a little bit of that Kaling wet dog kind of thing. Maybe that is it. But here with the lemon, plus the honey from the mead, you know, cause mead is honey backing it up and something that the bourbon is doing there, but maybe it's lost. It reads as interesting instead of miserable. And then everything else holds true. Well, hot dang, we done it. I made, oh, I need a name for this drink. Did we name the other one either? We 
I'm named the first That's song. a Marty Bird. Yeah. That's a Marty Bird for sure. Number two here. I'm gonna name this Safe in Hell after a pre-code film about running from New Orleans down into the Caribbean to hide out from some bad mobsters. Because the combination of Southern Comfort and also the, um, the Lemon Heart makes me think of Safe in Hell. It's not a great movie, but it's okay. And this one is a, a benign threat, which um, according to at least one person is the main ingredient for comedy, benign threats. So this was uh, Worst Bottles of My Bar Part Two. I definitely wanna do more of these. I gotta get us some Gamel Dance. Everybody tells me that's like terrifying stuff. You will find me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon and TikTok in the places that are now appearing upon your screen. And also, I have been making this show for a very, very, very long time. And while subscribing is nice, it's better to watch the other episodes of the show that exist. You gotta smash that like button, bro. I don't care about that, just watch the show. I hope that you just sucked in like soft little sleepy brained sponges looking for more and more YouTube content. Okay, I'll see you guys soon with another episode of HTD here on the All the HTDs All the Time Network.